Bam! Mr. Teru, in this lesson we are going to learn another technique for finding volumes of revolution or solids, which is called the shell method. And as you can tell by the beginning of the video, what we're going to be doing is comparing how to find these volumes that we've already learned using the disk method with the shell method. And we're going to work through three examples each time uh, showing you the comparison between trying to find the volume uh, you know, between these two methods. We do that because you have a choice as to which one you use and sometimes it doesn't really matter which choice you make, it's about the same amount of work, but often problems will ha you'll have a clear advantage uh, in other words, it's going to be easier to find the volume of that solid depending on whether you choose the disk method or whether you choose the shell method. And with our examples, I'll be going very meticulously through the shell method problems or examples because we've already talked about how to find volumes using the disk method. Now, one thing to pay attention to now that we're going to start the comparison is when you're finding volumes of revolution using the disk method, the representative rectangle that is rotated, which creates these disks uh, that we use to estimate the volume, is those representative rectangles are always going to be perpendicular to the axis of symmetry. And so if we have a horizontal axis of symmetry, we have a vertical uh, representative rectangle, and thus we are going to be integrating with respect to x, letting the widths of those uh, rectangles approach zero, giving us an infinite number of those disks, and so on and so on, allowing us to basically exactly estimate the volume. Now, if we have that same horizontal axis of rotation, uh, you can see with the shell method, what's happening is we have another, again, representative rectangle, but it is going to be parallel to the axis of rotation. And as you spin that rectangle around, what you get is a cylinder. And like we allowed these disks to have uh, approach uh, a width of zero, we're going to uh, be finding, you know, basically finding the volume of a cylinder, which is pi r squared times height. Uh, but you can see that these cylinders are hollow in the middle, so uh, it's a shell. And really how to find the volume of a shell, at least a uh, cylindrical shell, is to find the volume of the outside cylinder, find the volume of the inside cylinder, and subtract them. And then ultimately, because uh, in this particular example with this horizontal axis of rotation, you can see that we're going to be working off of the width of delta y ultimately when we get to the next screen and you see all the formulas. And we'll be allowing that, uh, that delta y in this particular case, or the width of those cylinders, to approach just sort of like a paper thin width. Uh, and thus, that is going to give us and uh, allow the number of these cylinders to approach infinity and given us and given us a uh, basically exact approximation again of the volume of that uh, solid revolution. Now if I remove my pitcher and pitcher, old school style, we are going to have the volume of a shell. Now I've taken this, you know, whatever, the blue, the red, the whatever shell, I've pulled a particular shell out and what we see is again finding the volume of a cylinder is pi times the radius squared times the height. But we're going to have that outside cylinder and then we're going to subtract out the, you know, subtract from it the volume of the inside cylinder, giving us this shell. And we have the height. We have, of course, which is the distance between the two parallel bases of our cylinder. We have an axis of rotation. And ultimately what we're going to be working with is this value of p, which is uh, my book, uh, or you'll see in your textbook, labeled as an average radius. Well, it's the middle, it, it's the radius, it's the distance to the middle of the shell. Well, okay, but when you first talk about having this clear-cut, you know, hollow shell or subtraction of two cylinders, you're going to have an outside radius, which is going to be the perimeter, and again, P is the distance from the axis of rotation to the, the middle of the shell, plus half the width. And then you'll have an inside radius, which is P minus half of the width, or W over T. And then we have the W, which again, you'll see that labeled as either delta X or delta Y on the next screen when I give us the, our, uh, our, our formal uh, formulas. But when we look at all of this, we have the, outs, the, air, the, the volume of the outside shell. Okay, so pi times the radius squared times the height. So we have that here, pi times uh, pi times p plus w over 2 squared times the height, area of a square times the height, minus pi times p minus w over 2 squared 
times the height. We square these binomials. We start to uh, distribute the pi and the h through these parentheses, collecting all of the like terms, allowing uh, those to cancel, like we have a positive pi squared h and a negative pi squared h. We have a positive pi h w squared over 4 and a negative 1. And what you're all we're left, up, uh, left with is two of these terms giving me a simplified version of the volume of a shell is equal to 2 pi times p, which is going to be the average radius, times w, the width of uh, each of those shells times the height. So let's get on to the next screen, get a couple of these, these official formulas for when we have a horizontal and vertical axis of rotation, and get to those many examples we'll do in our video. <laughs> no, 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 no. Like on the previous screen, if you have a horizontal axis of rotation, uh, then using uh, finding the volume using the shell method, you're going to have horizontal representative rectangles which we're going to, of course, again, allow that to rotate around the axis of rotation and create those shells. Uh, that means that we are going to be allowing those shells to become, you know, infinitely thin, paper thin, and letting delta y approach zero. So the thickness is approach zero, so we're going to have to integrate with respect to uh, y. So the volume is equal to 2 pi times the definite integral from c to d, the lower and upper limit of our plane region, times or of p of y, times h of y. And again, you're integrating with respect to y. Now, I hope I didn't misspeak in the previous uh, frame. If I did, I'll have a little typo for correction. Uh, but, you know, it was correct when I said that the volume of a cylinder was pi r squared, the area of the base, times the height. But yet, when you look at this formula, now that it's formally given to us, 2 pi r times h that was part of a formula that you learned in geometry, which was the surface area of a right circular cylinder. 2 pi r is the distance around a circle, and then you have the height. So all of a sudden, really what you seem to have is not the area of a cylinder, but the surface area of a right circular cylinder. Well, remember, we're letting these shells become paper thin. Uh, think of buying a can of soup or something at the at the store. You, if you were to take a you know cut the label and open it up, you just get a piece of paper, and that area of a piece of paper is length times width. Well, if that paper has to wrap around the circle, it's two pi r times h. So yes, we're talking about volume, but with those those delta y's approaching zero, you're sort of have these paper thin shells. Thus it kind of becomes sort of like a surface area situation. So now P is an expression that is going to be describing the radius, the distance from the axis of rotation uh, to some center point of our shell, the average radius. Now you can't have a negative distance, so you can define it as the absolute value of Y minus K. And if that horizontal axis maybe is the x-axis, then it's going to be just y equals, k, uh, y equals 0, and it's going to seem like the radius is just going to be y, but if that were y equals 2, then the radius would be whatever the y value is for uh, uh, this independent variable, minus 2. And if the plane region is below the axis of uh, rotation, Again, we can't subtract and get a negative distance. That doesn't make any sense. So then maybe if my plane region was down here, then I would be saying just so I could lose the absolute value symbol, uh, do k minus y. So we, we would prefer to have our plane region either above the axis of rotation or to the right like we have over here just to avoid that. But you need to think about that sometimes. Sometimes it's going to be x, in this case, x minus k. And if the plane region was on the other side, I would be doing k minus x to make sure that that distance was coming out to be positive. If you have a vertical axis of rotation, well, then you have uh, a vertical a representative rectangle. That means that we are going to be allowing those to approach zero or integrating with respect to x so or functions, will, which will probably already be given to us. Y in terms of x will work perfectly for this. It's 2 pi times the definite integral from a to b, uh, the lower and upper limit of our plane region again, of p of x times h of x dx. And again, that expression describing the radius, p, uh, will be in terms of x, and it is the absolute value, technically the absolute value of x minus k. If your plane region is on the right, it's going to be x minus that k. And if your plane region happens to be on the left, then you may want to do k minus x. And we'll have that 
in one of our three examples coming up. Again, each of these examples are going to compare the disk method to the new shell method that we're studying right now. Bam! Example number one. Find the volume of the solid formed by revolving the region, that one, about the y-axis. And since we're just starting to learn the shell method, let's just, let's just use that one. And if we're using the shell method, the y-axis is a vertical uh, line, uh, right? It's x equals zero, so we are going to be talking about having a vertical representative rectangle something like that, which means that we are going to be integrating with respect to x, and our function's already y in terms of x, so that is good. And uh, let's start setting this up. So our volume is going to be equal to, let's see the formula again, 2 pi times the definite integral. Uh, use, and again, we're, let's see here, we are going to be revolving around x equals zero. This, rec this representative rectangle is going to move between the v x values of zero and the x values of three. So we're going to integrate from zero to three. We'll find the definite integral from zero to three. And then it was p of x or p of h. Well, this would be p of x. Okay, so a expression that describes the distance that you are, that the shell is, the center of the shell is the average radius from the axis of rotation. Well, the axis of rotation is x equals zero, and we just have, uh, you know, x values, you know, where we are in the center of the shell. So it's just going to be x minus zero, or x. Now it's the height. An equation or an expression that describes the height of the rectangle. Well, the rectangle is not just going down to the x-axis. We need to think about this a little bit because, you know, I need to know this length right here. Okay, so as I go along the x-axis and I start looking, you know, as I go along my, my x-axis and I start looking for y values, uh, if I say, you know, it kind of looks like I drew this over the x value of 2. Well, if I put 2 into this uh, function, I would be getting this y value. Uh, you know, um, 2 squared is 4. 4 divided by 3 is 4 thirds, plus 1 is 7 thirds, a little bit uh, somewhere around 2, and that's kind of like, you know, this isn't just a sketch, of course. So this function is going to give me this height here, but I need the height of the rectangle. So what I need to do is take the entire height of 4, that's the upper limit of this, uh, uh, of this uh, well, I'm saying the word limit, I'm, and then I'm looking over there at my definite integral, but that's how high, that's the top of the region. So that's going to be 4. And now I don't want a rectangle which is four units long. I want to take out that bottom portion to just have this. So that's going to be four, take away that height, which is coming from the function. So minus, uh, four minus one third x squared plus one and dx. Let me make sure I got that right. Two pi times the definite integral. We're going to go from zero to three because that's where the, uh, vertical representative rectangle is going to be able to move through. We have the distance away from the axis of rotation, and then we have the height of the rectangle uh, in reference to or with respect to x. So that's good. Now I'm going to step out. I'm going to reveal the, the process of going through this integration one step at a time. You might want to pause the video and just make sure uh, actually, with all the practice we've had with, with doing uh, definite integration, this is probably going to be a relatively easy one as far as the the process of going through that is concerned, but give it a shot yourself. So we distributed the negative sign, we combined like terms, we then distributed the x through the parentheses as well, and of course, this is a, a pretty straightforward polynomial. We just take these powers, we increase them by one, we then divide by that power. So negative one third divided by four is negative one twelfth. Take that, increase it. Three divided by two, of course, is three halves. And then, you know, just finishing up, finding that our volume has an area, or excuse me, a volume has a value of 27 pi over two cubic units. And that is the shell method. Now for this particular example, Let's see what it would have looked like had we set the problem up using the disk method. 
Now, if we're going to use the disk method, of course, that means that we need representative rectangles, which are perpendicular to the axis of rotation. So let's get this out of here. If I draw a horizontal rectangle, it'll look something like that. That means we are going to be integrating with respect to y, though. So that means that if I'm going to go through the process of finding the volume using the disk method, which, by the way, the volume using the disk method is going to be pi times the definite integral from you know, A to B, C to D, you pick a, pick a couple of letters here, so I'm just going to call it A to B. Uh, it's going to be pi times R, which is going to be, I'm just going to write it R. In this case, it's going to have to be in terms of Y squared, pi R squared times uh, the height of each of the disks. Well, the height of each of the disks is going to be delta Y, or excuse me, dy, so just basically pi r squared, and then the dy, the variable at which we're integrating by, is, well, that's the height, but it's also the variable of integration. Okay, so I need to turn this around. Let's see, we got to, uh, we're going to subtract both sides by 1 and get y minus 1 is equal to 1 third x squared. We're going to multiply both sides by 3. And that is going to give us 3y minus 3 is equal to x squared. And, of course, we need to get this, you know, solve for, you know, x in terms of y. So we're going to square root both sides. And we, that is going to give us a final answer of x is equal to the square roots of 3y minus 3. Now I didn't include the plus or minus because I'm just have the I have the right side here as my plane region which we're going to rotate around. So why would I want to work with negatives if I don't need to? Uh, I could certainly I guess have the plane region over on the side and and say it was negative square root of three y minus three, but that would just complicate things needlessly. Now, as I set this up. You know, I might glance at this initially and go, oh man, I just introduced a radical. That's going to complicate things. Uh, but that expression that is the represents the radius. Now, my axis of rotation is x equals 0. So explaining the radius or the length of that rectangle is going to be very simple. That's it. And since the uh, representative rectangles now are horizontal, they're going to move between the values. My lower limit now is going to be 1, and my upper limit is going to be 4. So my volume is going to be found by doing pi times the definite integral from 1 to 4 of my expression describing the radius in terms of y is going to be the square root of 3y minus 3 squared dy. <clears throat> Let's see what that looks like as we reveal the, the process, the, the solution, uh, one step at a time. And just like that, we have the answer of 27 pi over 2 cubic units, just like we had when we integrated, of course, with the shell method. It's not that one uh, method is wrong and the other one is right, it's just a matter of getting uh, used to these problems and ultimately being able to decide on your own which is going to give you the answer in the simplest fashion. And I do believe in this particular example, the, the disk method was the easier of the two. In our second example, there will be a, a, sm a small advantage or maybe, I don't know, maybe you think it's a big advantage to doing the shell method because uh, we are going to first do the second example. I'm going to pull a clip from an old video when I taught how to find the volume of these solids. Uh, using the disk slash washer method. And the next example is going to uh, require the use of the washer method, which will complicate, I think, the, the work just a little bit. Uh, and then we'll come back and do the same uh, example. I'm pointing <laughs> this like it's it, but no, we're going to do the second example. Uh, I'll be doing that with you in just a moment using the shell method. If you want to skip the disk method, uh, I have the timestamps to all my examples down in the description. Just simply click to the next example and you won't have to see me re-explain the washer method again if, if you don't need it. 
So now we have our uh, notes out of the way. Let's get back to that previous example. Everything's going to be the same except for our axis of revolution is going to go from x equals 6 to x, excuse me, x equals 4 to becoming x equals 6. And this time I went ahead and tried my best to draw the revolution of the solid so we can see that hole going through. Uh, or you're starting from scratch, you draw the function, you draw the boundaries that you're trying to encompass, you put the axis of rotation and you go, oh wait a minute, the axis of rotation isn't actually part of my uh, plane region. So again, I'm going to have that hole. Once you recognize that, don't forget, the area of a uh, solid using the disk method is pi times, uh, in, you know, with revolution, uh, definite integral from C to D of capital R of Y squared minus lowercase r Y squared D Y in this particular case because we have a vertical axis of rotation. So we need to figure out, uh, all, well all things being the same, so our lower and upper limits are still going to be 0 and 2. Remember I just moved the axis of rotation. I can't find a disk with a hole in it. I need, to, I need to find the volume of a larger disk and then subtract out the area of the inner disk. So uh, I can't just say, well, how, how long is this, you know, orange rectangle? I need to find capital R, a function that would give me capital R of Y. So as I work my way again up the Y axis, uh, my axis of rotation is X equals 6. So Initially, this rectangle, before we take out the center area, has to reach from x equals 6 over to wherever the function is. So it's going to be uh, from x equals 0, 6, and then minus, I want to take out this section right here as I work my way up towards 2, and that distance is found by, well, x is equal to y squared. So that's this little piece right here, very similar to the last problem. Except before, with the axis of symmetry, or the axis of rotation, excuse me, being at x equals 4, that radius was 4 minus y squared. Well, now my axis is at x equals 6, so it's 6 minus y squared. And then my inside radius, the part that we want to subtract out, well, that's just a constant difference of 2. But again, thinking about working my way up the y-axis and then seeing these distances away from uh, you know, where x is equal to zero basically, how far is that? Well, that's a distance of six, and then I want to take out this distance of four to give me a constant inside radius, uh, in this particular case, that we have of two. Now, <clears throat> that I have my two radiuses set up, again, from my axis of rotation, my large outside radius, and my inside radius, I can finish filling up my formula here, which is going to be uh, capital R of Y, which is going to be 6 minus Y squared, squared minus my inside radius, which is a constant value of 2, squared, dy. And now, just uh, I'm going to step off if you want to try this on your own, but I'm going to reveal it step by step uh, so that you can too. All right, so I took that binomial, I squared it, I combined like terms, I went through the process of finding the integral, uh, did the definite integral, and came up with the volume of this solid, which is equal to 192 over 5 pi cubic units, or approximately equal to 4,632.47 cubic units. All right, well now that we've reviewed the disk slash, uh, slash washer method for finding the volume of the solid, let's see what it looks like doing it with the shell method. Okay, well with the shell method, of course, you can see that we have, uh, with a vertical axis of rotation, we're going to have a vertical representative rectangle, which means that I can go ahead and leave this equation y in terms of x. Now, of course, I'm going to have to deal with a radical, so maybe that's a little bit of a disadvantage of using this process, but we don't have to worry about the outside and inside radiuses separately. So, looking at it this way, we have 2 pi, times the definite integral. Now, this representative rectangle, as it, as it rotates and makes these shells, is going to move between 0 and 4. So that in, instead of, like before, integrating between 0 and 2. So lower limit 0, 
upper limit four. And now we need an expression in terms of x that describes, well, the radius. How far is this representative rectangle from the axis of rotation? Well, the way this is given to us, the plane region is to the left of the axis of uh, rotation. So as I look at my distance here, well, my greater x value is the x value of 6, and I need to know what this distance is. Well, from my y-axis, that's going to be 6 minus x. Okay, I don't want the distance from the x. I don't want the distance from the y-axis. I want the di distance from the axis of uh, rotation, and yet that has a greater value than the x value where my representative rectangle is. So we're going to do 6 minus x to make sure that that distance comes out to be positive. And then the height. Okay, well the height of this rectangle, of course, is defined by the function, and the function, uh, we're going along, we're picking independent values of x, and we're finding y, and so the height from the x-axis is simply going to be uh, y is described by the square root of x. So that'll be x to the one-half power, and we're going to integrate, of course, with that vertical, represent, that, uh, vertical representative rectangle, integrate with respect to x. So let's see what this problem looks like as we uh, show the solution one step at a time. Alrighty then, so we have, uh, of course, the distribution of x to the one-half power. We have uh, integrating, we take this power and increase it by one, that's three halves, and then we divide by three halves or multiply by the reciprocal. Increasing that by one, we get five halves and multiply by two-fifths. Uh, and just, you know, working along the arithmetic. And just a footnote, when you are, of course, in I'm sure by now you probably have this down, but when you take numbers and you raise them to rational or fractional exponents, if you're not allowed to use your calculator, apply the root first that keeps the number smaller. Uh, the square root of 4 is 2, 2 cubed is 8, and then you multiply by 4 and get 32. And then ultimately, of course, you know, it's not like one method is right and one method is wrong. We get the same answer of 192 pi over 5 cubic units. A little bit of a disadvantage here with our rational exponents, but at the same time, again, we didn't have to worry about finding an inside and outside uh, radius. So maybe you feel one way is easier with this problem than another. Uh, and our last example is going to be a very, very clear advantage to working that example or that problem with the shell method as opposed to the disk method. But again, you need to look at every question individually, and if you're not being told what method to use, use what you believe is best and easiest. It's the last example. Find the volume of the solid generated by revolving the plane region bound by y is equal to the square root of x plus 1, y is equal to x minus 1, and y is equal to 0 about the x-axis. Now, if we wanted to do the disk method for this problem, then since we have a horizontal axis of rotation, we would need to, of course, like we've pointed out a number of times in this video, and we really already should know, vertical representative rectangles, which means that we'd be integrating with respect to x. Well, we can certainly do the problem this way, but if we do, and as you learned in your previous section of finding volume using disk and washer method, that we have a portion of this graph which will be just a standard disk method. Uh, and we would have to set up an integral for this from negative 1 to 1 with an upper bound defined by y is equal to the square root of x plus 1 and the lower bound, you know, of y equals 0. But then you get into this region between 1 and 3 where you're going to, when you rotate this about the x-axis, of course, have a hole. And thus the other part of this solid, you would have to remember or work with the washer method, where we're going to have a hole, so then we have to talk about the outside and, in, and the inside um, uh, radius and such, and that, that'll complicate things. And ultimately, uh, I'm not going to walk through it, but we're going to have an, uh, a, a definite integral to represent this uh, volume that looks pretty much something like this. Now, 
now that we have that up there, I've kind of cheated a little bit uh, because I can clearly see, like I said, they've got a couple of regions. We're going from negative 1 to 1. Uh, but in the second uh, uh, portion here, the second definite integral, I just have the lower limits as 1 going to 3. Now, it looks like the functions actually you know, do intersect at 3, 2, but I haven't checked that algebraically. Uh, it, it will, but we need to show that work, of course. Well, you know, I mean, we do have some radicals. They are going to get squared away, but, you know, we've got a lot going on here. And, again, it's set up, we have to do, if using the disk method, we have to set up two definite integrals. Well, if you do this problem with the washer method, well, then, of course, with a horizontal axis of rotation, you're going to have horizontal my eraser <laughs> cloth just went down, uh, you're going to have horizontal uh, representative rectangles. And, okay, whatever, but look at what's happening. The right-hand right side bound and the left-hand side bound are, you know, defined by these two functions. We're not going to have to set up two definite integrals. We can get away with just setting up one. Okay, well, let's just make sure that we do know the... Uh, the lower and upper bound, of course, and we are going to have to integrate with respect to y, which also means that my functions are going to have to be x in terms of y. So we're going to take this equation here, square root bo or square both sides and get y squared is equal to x plus 1. And we're going to simply just add 1 to both sides here and get uh, starting from y is equal to x minus 1. We'll have y plus 1 is equal to x. So let's get these uh, equations Oh, almost done, didn't quite finish. We need to subtract both sides by 1. And I need to get my dogs to stop barking, so let's get uh, these equations set equal to each other, find out the y value that makes them equal, and set up that uh, definite integral and get my dogs calmed down. All right, sorry about the interruption there, uh, and but it gave me some uh, time to blend in our solution. Of course, we're setting this equal to zero, we're factoring, and we find out that uh, these functions are intersecting at um, a y value of negative 1 and a y value of 2. And I'm not concerned about an intersection value of negative 1 because my lower bound is defined by the variable of, or my line, y is equal to zero. So what I really need is this intersection point. Now, I only found the y value, but if I'm doing the shell method, I'm integrating with respect to y, so that's really all I need to know. But this point is actually 3, 2. Okay, so as we set up our definite integral to find the volume of the solid using the shell method, well, that is going to be volume is equal to 2 pi times the definite integral from lower limit of 0, now that we know, and upper limit, you know, exactly, of 2. Okay, so we need a 2 pi and r, so how far is this shell away from y equals 0? Well, it's going to be y minus uh, 0, so the radius is going to be y. Now, the length of the, the rectangle, okay, well, I need my length, of course, to be, to be positive. So I need to take what would be uh, my rightmost, my greatest value, and subtract it with my left. So now this is re now these functions, right? These functions are going to be in respect to uh, y. So that's the independent variable. So as I choose an independent variable of y and I'm looking at my x's, of course I want to take my larger x and subtract it with my smaller x, that means I need to take my function first, subtract my function that is farthest to the right, right first, and then subtract it with the one that it's on the left. So the length of that representative rectangle is going to be, well, this rightmost function is, uh, well, I've erased it now, but it was y plus 1 minus the uh, left side, which was y squared minus 1 is equal to x, so it's y squared minus 1. And of course, don't forget, uh, we're subtracting, and we have, of course, we're subtracting by a, uh, an expression with more than one term, so if you don't use the parentheses there, of course, you'll, you will not dis, uh, distribute the negative sign through and, and, of course, get the wrong answer. So let me make sure here. 
one open, two open, both closed, and we are integrating with respect to y. Double check my notes, even though it looks pretty darn good. Yes, excellent. So now that we have the definite integral set up uh, for the finding volume using the shell method, let's find that solution one step at a time. Okay, well, we distribute the negative, we distributed the y, we combined like terms, we did the integration, and our final answer for the solid, the, the volume of this solid, which I'm pointing to it like I drew the three-dimensional solid or attempted to, but the volume comes out to be 16 pi over 3 cubic units. That is the end of my last example and the end of my video. I'm Mr. Taru. Go do your homework.